In Investing 101 today, how to deal with the volatility in the market this summer. Joining us now, Fritz Goldman. It's the summer, and that doesn't necessarily mean that we have Sean Hughes here, but Sean is here to talk about the summer outlook on Wall Street. And Sean comes to us from the uh, Hughes and Dern Financial Group. So thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So there's a lot of turbulence out there, a lot of uh, confusion, whether it's taxes or perhaps the situation with duties and imports right. uh, and what's going on globally, macroeconomics. So let's talk about what we can expect this summer as much as we could expect. We can have a reasonable expectation of what could happen. Um, there's been a lot of volatility this year. Last year, uh, 2017 in the market was a great, great year. And the things were going gangbusters. Trump came into office and things were going well. We've seen a lot of volatility this year and that's been caused by a few things. And uh, mostly the Fed has uh, been rising interest rates. And uh, also you got the tariff situation where Trump's trying to bring more business back here to the U.S. mainland. And um, that's causing some, some concerns about a trade war. But with all that turbulence out there, what do we want to consider for our money? I mean, there's got to be some plans to take that into account. Yeah, and I'll tell you one thing you don't want to do. You don't want to watch your account every day and make decisions based upon what happened yesterday or what's going to happen tomorrow. We got to think long term. Uh, we got to think over a full market cycle what our goals are. A full market cycle could be three, four, five, six years. So we need to let that cycle play out. But the most important thing to know is what is your risk tolerance and what is the purpose of the money that you're investing. If I need money in six months and it's gonna be for college, I probably don't wanna put it in the most aggressive stock fund because you could lose 40% in six months. On the other hand, if we're 20 years old and this money's for retirement, we can be a little bit more aggressive. So thinking about that whole scenario, what would be some specific tips that you might have? Now, I'm not asking for stock tips in particular, but for example, uh, would we, as an example, retirement, what, using something more conservative, much more conservative now, perhaps. Yeah, there's a, there's a few tools you can use. What I would say is stock investments are typically for the long term. We know over a 15 or 20 year period, 98 to 99% of the time, stocks are gonna have a positive return. Can't say the same over a five to 10 year period. So longer time horizon stocks do make sense. As you get closer to retirement, you might wanna reduce some of your exposure. Then we talk about bonds. Uh, and bonds basically have an inverse relationship with interest rates. When interest rates are going up, the value of bonds are going down. So we've been in a 30 year period where bonds were making money because interest rates were 12, 13% in the 1980s and they've come down for the last 30 years, but now the opposite is happening. People used to retire, put their money in bonds and call it a day, but now people are more concerned because they can't do that. And not all annuities are created equal, but it is an alternative that a lot of people are starting to endorse, even on Wall Street. That sounds like a really interesting idea. In fact, I'm going to talk to you about it after we're done. Okay. <laughs> so, Sean, summing everything up, obviously we don't have a crystal ball to know where things are going precisely, but long term is the, is the idea. Yeah, long term. And in, in the shorter term, what you can do is know what, you're, what risk you are exposed to. So you can use a tool like Riskalyze software, which you can put your portfolio in and everything that you own. And it'll tell you if 2008 happened again where the market crashed, how much risk you do have, how much you could lose. You could use a tool like Morningstar. Uh, you can you know, stress test your portfolio there. But if you're not okay with losing 40 to 50% of your savings and that's how your portfolio is set up, you might want to start to make some changes before that does happen because we have been on a nine and a half year run here in the market. Okay, well, this is good advice. Thanks for joining us again, Sean. Thanks for having me. Check out businessfirstam.com to find out where to see our entire show. And don't forget to like, follow, and share Business First AM.